It's so easy to get things nowadays. If you have enough money, you can walk into any medium-sized city and get anything you want in the same afternoon. In Canada, walk into a grocery store and you can grab a fruit which takes up to 14 months to grow in a tropical country two continents away and buy it for only 69 cents a pound. Walk into a hardware store and you can find any number of chemicals which have been dug out of the ground, purified, and then bottled for you. In fact, there's so much of it, it might actually take you a while to find exactly what you want. We might have a lot of problems here, but supply certainly isn't one of them. This makes it really easy to concentrate on the things that we all need to do for our society, but I think it also makes it really easy to forget all of the sacrifices our ancestors had to make just to get us all of the stuff we kind of take for granted today. Not only that, but I think the past year has also taught me just how fragile our logistics systems can be. Just in time manufacturing might save us a lot of time and money, but it certainly doesn't help if you've run out of supplies and there's 15 people in line ahead of you. Deliveries that can take as long as three days. It's president of life sciences and healthcare calls this the biggest global logistics effort since World War II. That's why I really appreciate all of the people who teach how things are done in their little corner of the universe, from making rope... Come on. Right on. My next job was to slide the top back at just the right pace to keep the strands forming into a rope at 45 degrees. To repairing circuit boards. So today we're going to be working on a MacBook. Let's try and fix this MacBook and see if we can make it work again. Here we have an A1706 MacBook Pro that's not powering on. We might think we're really educated, but how much do we really know when we don't have all of the systems of modern society supporting us? I think the more I know how to do myself, the more resilient I can be to disruptions in society, and the stronger my soul becomes to adversity. The philosophy of the alchemists, whom I've studied and admire quite a bit, talks about how the phenomena that we observe in the flask is mirrored in other parts of the universe. The fire that we put our reagents through are like the sacrifices that we all have to make in the present to get a future we want. Even if you lose everything, you can still rebuild it all back and maybe end up better than you were before. I want to understand all of that better. The sacrifices the inventors of the past had to make to get us all the stuff we have today, and to build resiliency and strength by learning how to make things myself. That's why I'm starting a project to make something incredible, modern medicine, completely from scratch. Starting with ingredients you can dig out of the ground or grow yourself on a farm, I'm gonna to try to turn all of those things into something that's indistinguishable from what you'd buy over the counter. For the medicine I'm making, I've chosen aspirin. As of 2021, it's an incredibly common pharmaceutical that you can buy in many countries all over the world with a very compelling theory on the mechanism for how it works. It belongs in a class of medicines known as non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs, or NSAIDs, which are typically used to treat inflammation, fever, and pain. Aspirin is particularly known as a general pain reliever, and in Canada, all pharmacies and even some grocery stores carry bottles of aspirin right on the shelf. Despite how common it is, very few people actually know how aspirin works or even where it comes from. This is true even in the university setting, where the preparation of aspirin is like a universal activity that all undergraduate chemistry students have to do. The way the lab usually runs is that students are instructed to scoop some salicylic acid crystals that have already been prepared in a jar at the front of the classroom, and then they get some acetic and hydride, which is in a similarly placed bottle. They bring it back to their desk, mix it in a little beaker, and then they're basically done. After that, they leave the lab thinking they know how to make aspirin, but I'm not sure any of the students, or even myself, really thought about where acetic anhydride comes from or what salicylic acid is. Aspirin is so common in its use, yet mysterious in its origins, and I think this makes it the perfect compound to make for this project. Now this is going to be a long series where I test my ingenuity, um, but there are a few rules that I'll follow. First and foremost, I have to start with ingredients I can dig out of the ground myself or theoretically grow if I needed to. This allows me to be geography agnostic, meaning that um, as long as it's a plant that somebody has grown, I would just be able to buy the plant. 
However, if it's a mineral, I'm going to have to find a deposit that I can access myself. This is different than the farming example because although anybody would be able to get some seed and put it into the ground and wait as long as they're in the right geographical location, the problem with minerals is that sometimes it takes quite advanced technology to actually get under the ground and extract what you need. So I'd like to explore more of those aspects and that's why I'm forcing myself to go to deposits that I can actually walk to. Second, I'll allow myself the use of modern equipment and electricity. I'm pretty interested in primitive technology and how to make glass and things like that. But for this project, I just want to explore how the materials are transformed from one into the other. Third, I'll allow myself to buy larger quantities of the materials from a store once I've demonstrated how to make it naturally. This is because some of the processes are going to take a long time and if I need to make absolutely everything I use for every single step, uh, I might die before that happens. So uh, I, I want to finish this up. I just want to explore how the transformations occur and then the actual scale up or scale out would be uh, maybe another topic. But just to keep things realistic, I'll show how to make the things at the same purity that you can buy. By the end of the project, I would have answered all the questions I had while I was in school. Like, how is the pill of aspirin formed? I know it's not just pure aspirin all the way through the tablet. Where do you get salicylic acid, and what steps are needed to make acetic anhydride? As of this video, I'm thinking I'll need at least four steps to make the tablet, two to make the salicylic acid, and a whopping 59 steps for the acetic anhydride. Starting with such things as sulfur, apples, air, eggs, bananas, cinnamon, and even human urine. If you follow along, you can learn with me as I try to make aspirin from scratch. All of my steps will be documented here on my YouTube channel and also on my decentralized channel on Odyssey. I'm also going to put all of my procedures in text form in an open GitHub project so that you can access that and iterate on my methods to make them better. I'm doing all of this to make it completely open source and uncensorable by the people who run these platforms. Power to the people. If you want to support this project, consider signing up to my new Patreon page where you can support me on a per video basis. By the time you've seen this video, I've already posted the first episode of the series where I get an ingredient I need from a forest. The link for that video is in the description or you could just wait till the end of this video and click on the thumbnail. I can't wait to get started.